the passion takes it all. The musician Slash, who played as lead guitar with Guns N' Roses, described it like this in several interviews. The thing about being a musician is that you can't just stand up and you say you're going to be a musician. You have to live it, feel it, internalize it, and find a real connection to it. I have read that um, when I was a young researcher so long time ago, and um, I thought it was great. You know, and I love music, and I love metal. And but why what Slash said inspired me in some way in my scientific career until now, and why the passion takes it all counts for me, I will tell you today. The passion I'm talking about has to do with mathematics and how terrific the teaching and learning of mathematics is, and how I could observe that learners and also my future mathematics teachers view on mathematics changed when they work on real life problems. And this excites me until today when I see it. So, but to, to be honest to yourself, who has bad feelings when you hear the word mathematics? Okay, then there's time for change. So let us jump backwards a little bit. Uh, when I was a young researcher, I, I gave a lecture for the basics of teaching and learning of mathematics for students in their first uh, semester. And at the end of the semester, some students came to me uh, and said, hey, yeah, the lecture was OK, but there was one topic you were so enthusiastic. And this was about why mathematics is useful in real life. Yeah. And, you know, we, we talked about this uh, topic and, and we still think about it. And then you gave us a problem, which was quite different to normal, poor math problems in the exercise books. And the was this question here. How many LTE transmitter towers have distributed all over Germany that you have a good internet connection everywhere? Of course, you did or explained us a little bit how we can ex get access to it because, you know, we see there are no data, nothing. So we had to get data, we had to make assumptions, and that's what the student said, of course, we had to apply the mathematics we have learned at university. Yes, wow. And they said, we found out that, of course, our future learners in school will get a more motivated approach to mathematics when they work on this kind of problems. So um, after this feedback, of course, I realized that it is a topic of yeah, real life mathematics that I consider as so important and crucial for math teachers um, and uh, also uh, for learners. And I want to go on uh, regarding uh, this uh, topic. And uh, at this time, um, I was thinking that let more real life problems in the classroom. Yes? And um, if teachers and also learners will not get the chance to work on this kind of problems, to see that mathematics is useful, how will they know? So there was probably a change in my focus. You know, I was a young researcher and I just started in this field called mathematical modeling education. And mathematical modeling means that you solve real life problems like the LTE problem, with the help of mathematics and their possible right solutions, yes, and you transfer your mathematical results back to interpreting and validating to a reality. Um, but at this, at this time, you know, um, 17, 18 years ago, um, there were only few courses worldwide uh, for training teachers to do that. And so uh, my goal was then to work much more in this field because the teachers matters most. So without the teachers, the learners will perhaps not get a chance to see what mathematics is really about. So um, I started to give courses at university, of course, um, and also uh, at, um, with practicing teachers. And um, yes, then something happened very grateful. It was that mathematical modeling 
became a mandatory part in the educational national standards in mathematics. You know, and, and this means that the teachers had to teach it. The problem was, and still is, that the teachers um, didn't know what mathematical modeling means, nor how to teach it. Yeah. And they, of course, I find it difficult. You know, look at this problem here. It's not easy to get access to it. So it's also not easy to teach it. And um, then in my courses with the practicing um, teachers, um, um, I had to do a lot of convincing. Um, they solved these problems, and then they told me, oh, no, these questions are too difficult for my students, or no, these are really too time consuming. Um, you know, but above all, I knew I, I've, I've, I, I did it several times uh, in school because before I was a math teacher, yes, uh, I, I, I did it in school and also I observed my pre service teachers how they did it. Um, but, you know, it, this was really. This was really frustrating because my enthusiasm and they didn't, it didn't came across to the teachers. But this frustration uh, was good at the end because you know I want to do it better. I want to improve it because it, it is so important. And it, 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 therefore, it, it took time to develop a research-based course over years now, nearly 20 years now, and this meant means that not only that the, that the teachers solve this problem. So I said, what can, what can I make different? So I, I gave them more different kind of problems, more solutions of the learners, and more video clips to show the teachers, hey, it works. And that, that this kind of problem are so richful. Look at this one here. Can I make a contribution to reducing aluminum consumption and thus protecting the environment by choosing beverage cans? This problem you can use from primary school up to the tertiary level. It's so rich full of mathematics, and there's much more in it. We talk about sustainability. You can address dimensions of sustainability, the ecological, economic, and social issues, all with this problem. And then a lot of teachers got it, yes? All the things we want with our learners, that they get the 21st century skills, you can do with modeling activities, yes? So um, the learners, um, th this is a really nice thing, because I told you, yes, they were motivated when they, when they work on this kind of problems. But um, I'd like, uh, like to tell you more about the learners, because they're not uh, shouting hooray when they're working on this problem, because it is a challenge, right? So there's a little bit of frustration at the beginning. Since more than 10 years, I conduct so-called modeling days here in Kassel. So the schools in Kassel offer me three full school days that their learners can work on such kind of real-life problems, which is amazing, yes. Before, my becoming math teachers are trying, trained in a university seminar because they should, they, they will coach the students in school over the three days. And on the first day, there's assembly hall is full, 60, 70 learners, sitting there, they're my mass, uh, becoming mass teachers, we present three questions. For example, the LTE question. Then we present another question, like this one here. Roundabout versus traffic lights. You all know about what roundabouts are, traffic lights. And the question is, which traffic arrangement is better? Is that a wonderful, great question, right? So, um, and after we presented the, the learners a question, uh, one, one learner raised his hand in the last row and said, uh, these are the questions I thought we were supposed to do mathematics the next three days. Where, where's the mathematics in there? Yeah? I said, there's a lot of mathematics. You will experience it. You will do it. And then the journey begins uh, for my becoming math teachers and the learners. The first day is a little bit frustrating, um, because how can you access to it? Because this has never worked on this, this kind of open question. Yeah, the second day is better, because normally my math teachers, they go out with the students, they go to traffic lights, and so they get data. And the third day is a presentation day. Um, 
The learners put one possible solution on a poster, then there's a gallery work, and they present their result. And then the student came to me, who raised his hand on the first day and said, oh yeah, I did a lot of mathematics, and I couldn't believe it. I needed the mathematics I learned in school to solve this problem. And we worked on this problem so hard, and, and, and we, dis we discussed it. And, you know, and, and this was, it was so great because the student was talking so passionately about mathematics. Perhaps it changed a little bit his view on mathematics that it can be applied. And um, when you look at this picture here on the left, my becoming math teachers, and there are the students, grade nine, who worked on this problem for three days. Look at their faces. They, were, they are so proud. Yes, they did it. And, and you know, when I see that, this is, this is so exciting for me to see it. It's great. Yes, it's, it's amazing. So, and, and also, my, my former students who are working now in, in schools as teachers, they are doing also um, modeling days, and they are change makers because they offer the students the possibility to see mathematics in an, with another view, that it can be applied, that it's useful for life, um, and uh, that they can train the 21st century skills and their critical thinking. And when I think back, um, now, like when I was a young researcher and started in this field, when now uh, I'm a professor of, of mathematics education, uh, I'm thinking about what Slash said. And um, I also think about that um, change should, will not always happen in, in big things. Yes, it started in small things, like when, when students solve this kind of problem. And if someone would interview me now, like as a professor, before I was a researcher, I would say, the thing to be a professor is that you can't stand up and say you're going to be a professor. You have to live it, to feel it, to internalize it, and find a real connection to it. And I, you probably know now why I started with the passion makes it all, and why it counts for me. But I want to give it to you back, because we have it all. Because your passion takes it all, and your um, inspiration changes all. Thank you.